Hello everyone, the HMO5 here and welcome to my Taken King preparation guide. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you everything you can do right now in order to have the biggest advantage when the Taken King launches. This guide will be separated into three parts. The first is how you can store XP. The second is what materials are the most worthwhile to farm. And the third will be what gear you should get right now that will probably be useful in the Taken King. There are three ways to store XP for the Taken King. The first is simply by doing a bounty now, and then waiting until the Taken King launches to turn it in. By storing 10 5000 XP bounties, you're looking at 50,000 XP right out of the gate. Furthermore, there are two bounties in the game worth more than 5000 XP. There is the Skorix the Archon Slayer bounty, available from the Queen, which will net you 5500 XP, and then there is the Iron Wrath bounty, available from Lord Saladin, which will give you 10,000 XP, and can be turned into Xander 99 after the Iron Banner is over. The other way to store XP is via public event packages. Once per day, you can do a gold tier public event on each character and receive a package in your Postmaster. Upon opening it, you'll get 2500 XP and you can store up to 20 packages per character. Unfortunately, by the time you see this video, there will be fewer than 20 days left, but missing 2 or 3 packages really won't be too much of a problem, especially considering our third way of storing XP, which is via Focus Light. Now Focus Light doesn't actually give you any XP. But what it does do is increase all XP gains on your character for the next 30 minutes, by 50%. Focus Light can be acquired through entering codes found on the back of promotional Red Bull cans. Each code will grant one Focus Light. I personally recommend attempting to get three Focus Light in order to boost your stored XP on all three characters. For those that are worried that you'll need a ton of Focus Light in order to hit level 40 quickly, I have some possible good news. In the teaser trailer, we saw an XP drop at level 35. And based on the XP bar, the XP from 35 to 36 is actually less than that of 19 to 20. Based on this, I'm guessing the XP from 34 to 40 will only be just over 100,000. Now this is only speculation at this point, but it does fit Bungie's new narrative of playing at the max level instead of being a forever 29. In the Taken King, the most important material to have day one will be legendary marks. Legendary marks are replacing Crucible and Vanguard marks as the primary currency in the Taken King, and will be used to purchase just about everything in the tower. This is important because the gear sold in the tower will have 280 light, whereas our year 1 gear will only have 170. And with the new light system, this will be a very large difference in power. Unlike Crucible and Vanguard marks, Legendary marks will not be character bound, and there is no limit to how many you can earn per week, though you will only be able to have 200 at any given time. Furthermore, although maxing out your Crucible and Vanguard marks right now is a good idea, they will not be converted into Legendary marks. Instead, they will be converted into Commendations, which can be used to increase your reputation with a faction of your choosing. Which brings us to how we get Legendary marks on Day 1. Faction Packages. Now you may be thinking you can simply get a bunch of faction packages right now, and then open them when the Taken King launches. However, if you do this, they will not grant Taken King loot as the loot of a faction package is scaled to the expansion that you receive it in. The same is also true of engrams. If you store engrams right now, they will only ever turn into House of Wolves loot, even if you open them during the Taken King. However, there is a workaround, and that is what we call edging. Edging refers to getting your faction reputation one bounty away from ranking up. That way, when the Taken King launches, you'll be able to rank it up during the Taken King and receive a Taken King faction package. Now in the Taken King, you'll only be able to pledge to and rank up one faction per week per character. However, you'll be able to rank up your faction, Vanguard, and Crucible reputation at the same time, meaning you can edge your favorite faction, as well as Vanguard and Crucible, for up to 9 packages between all 3 characters. You can also edge the Cryptarch for a sneaky bonus package. You can even edge all 3 factions just in case one has significantly better gear, as these packages are going to be dropping weapons and armor and more than likely legendary marks themselves, although marks from packages is not 100% confirmed. However, weapons and armor will give legendary marks if you dismantle them. Aside from edging, there are two other ways to rank up factions to get more packages on day one. The first is by using our commendations that we get in exchange for marks, and the other is by donating materials. In the reveal stream, it was shown that you can trade in materials to a faction for a reputation bonus. You can give 5 motes of light, 25 weapon or armor parts, 4 special synth, or one heavy synth. Although the actual exchange rates were not shown, I speculate each material will grant the same amount of reputation and that it's likely to be between 10 and 30 per exchange, although this is just a guess. With that said, which is the best material to hoard? The answer is heavy synth, as it only requires one per exchange and heavy can easily be purchased in mass quantities via strange coins from Xur. For those looking to farm other materials or perhaps gain even more synth, 
the most efficient way to do so is via glimmer farming. The best place to glimmer farm in my experience is the gatekeeper checkpoint in the normal vault of glass. When farming solo, I would generally get around 40,000 glimmer per hour, not including axiomatic beads. When farming with one or two friends, I would get around 50,000, though you may be able to get a bit more if you were very focused. Once you've got the glimmer, you can purchase ammo sent from the gunsmith or purchase it from Varix at a very discounted rate. If you're looking to farm armor or weapon parts, you'll want to use your glimmer to repeatedly purchase and dismantle the Trials of Osiris gun or armor piece. If you're dismantling the gun, you can expect roughly 130 weapon parts per 25,000 glimmer. As for the armor, you can expect between 130 to 210 class materials, depending on the armor piece, as the prices vary. Keep in mind, class materials will be convertible into armor parts during the Taken King, so it shouldn't matter which one you stock up on. As for modes of light, the best way to farm them is to complete the raids and convert the materials at the speaker, or to do the Trials of Osiris. You can expect roughly 10 motes from Hard Crota, and roughly 15 from Hard Vault of Glass, depending on your luck. As for Trials, you'll receive up to 3 per package, including an extra 3 from the Mercury Chest. Now it is technically possible to farm extra modes by doing Dragon Strikes or the Prison of Elders, but the drop rates are really inconsistent, and even with a good team, you're probably only going to get 5 to 10 per hour, depending on your engrams. Now although those are the high priority materials for getting legendary marks, there are still a few other things you'll want to stock up on. I personally recommend storing around 400 of each planetary material, as there are a ton of new guns coming in the Taken King, and you'll want to make sure you can upgrade them as soon as possible. As for strange coins, I recommend keeping about 50, as they will no longer be guaranteed drops from the Weekly Heroic. Which brings us to Etheric Light. Currently Etheric Light has no use in the Taken King, but Bungie has said they are working on some sort of use for it. What that use is remains to be seen. Personally, I recommend keeping what you have now, but I don't think it's worth going out of your way to farm, as the best case scenario is it trades in for reputation, and the worst is that it trades for Glimmer. I think the odds of it trading for legendary marks is almost zero. Speaking of Glimmer, with all these new items you're going to burn it fast. While the cap is still going to be 25,000, there is a way around this. Ascendant Radiant Shards can be exchanged at the speaker for 250 Glimmer each, but instead of exchanging them right away, you can simply store them in your vault to effectively pass the Glimmer cap. Ascendant and Radiant Energies can also be converted into shards and then exchange, but this caused 50 Glimmer to convert them. You can also simply store the classic Glimmer items such as House Banners and Axiomatic Beads, which exchange for 200 each. The last item on our list is Exotic Shards, which brings us to current gear. More specifically, what Year 1 gear is likely to be useful in the Taken King? When it comes to PvP, most Year 1 gear will still be useful in the normal Crucible, since level scaling is not enabled. However, when it comes to PvE, I don't think any of it is going to beat out the 280 light gear available in the tower, since our year 1 gear will be stuck at 170 light. That being said, exotics are another story, as if you have a year 1 exotic, you will have access to the year 2 blueprints and be able to purchase the year 2 version for a large amount of legendary marks and an exotic shard on day 1. So I definitely recommend saving your current exotic shards and trying to get as many different exotics as possible as the year 2 versions have very different perks and we don't know which ones are going to be good. And one last thing. Bungie has announced that the King's Fall raid will not be available to play on day one, so don't worry about being online super early for that, as they'll probably be releasing it a week or so after Taken King is out, so you guys can get geared up and ready for it. And that's about it for Taken King preparation. As a quick disclaimer, I will say methods such as storing XP and edging factions have worked in both previous expansions, which is why I believe they will continue to work in the Taken King. Even if Bungie were to change something at the last minute, I believe this is still the best way to prepare. I hope this guide has been helpful, and I wish you all luck in your day one adventures.